Hello everyone, this is Coach Oliver once again. Here we are with round number three of Tata Steel Chess 2022. And we have the best game of round number three between Vidit Gujarati against Daniel Dubov from Russia. All right, this is quite intriguing because last night, Carlson won over Giri. Okay, and uh, we all know very well that uh, Vidit works for Giri. And Dubov works for Carlson, right? So that means this game is a sweet revenge, yeah? sweet revenge in a way. Um, we did winning over Dubov. Okay, let's go through the game. It starts with e4. Okay, but last night it was a d4 one. It's a Catalan. This time, Carlson's uh, second Dubov went for e4. Okay, the king's pawn. We did went for e5. Knight f3, knight into c6. Bishop c4, knight f6. All right. White went for d3. Okay, another sideline here would be knight to g5. Okay. Going into the fried liver. If let's say black plays d5, takes on d5, and then knight a5. Okay. So with the one, d3 was played by white. Black went into bishop c5, c3 d6 bishop g5 okay when you have a chance to pin on the queen you gotta do it pin on d8 so a6 bishop h4 maintaining the pin a5 to stop any ideas of b4 and a4 knight into a3 all right this is a bit interesting this is an interesting fact here knight a3 was also played by magnus last night against Giri. And here, Magnus second Dubov went for knight a3 in a king's pawn. Last night, Giri went for b takes a3. This time, Vidit was like, I will follow my friend. <laughs> I'll go for b takes a3. That's nice, huh? This is a nice rivalry between friends, yeah? Okay, b takes a3. All right, white has a doubled pawn compensation to bishops. Doubled pawn to bishops. Queen into e7. Castle's king side. Knight b8. Okay, rerouting the knight from c6 going into d7. Pawn goes to d4. This is an important reaction also for white since the king is still in the middle of the board. White black is still uncastled. Knight bd7, rook to b1, controlling the semi open file, the b file. Yeah, g5, okay, very dynamic chess. Yeah, no castle. Vidit is going for war. Yeah, so bishop into g3, knight takes e4. Queen c2, f5. We did once fire. Yeah, fire on board. Five. Outpost on e4. Good scope with the knight, centralized knight. Pawn protects it. Okay, but king is a bit dangerous on e8. Takes on e5, takes on e5, rook f1. Mm -hmm. Black cannot castle because the bishop is taking away the g8 square. Knight takes on g3, all right. Takes on g3, e4, reinforcements, yeah. Takes the knight, we have a replacement on e4 now. g4, okay, this is a bit dangerous for black. Since uh, this pawn in f5 is protecting e4, the rook on e1 is also attacking e4 and the queen. And this is in the line of the queen and the king. Yes. So black had to be black has to be careful, and black had to play knight c5, protecting the important e4 square. Now knight e4, okay, putting more pressure on the f5 pawn or that square on f5. Rook f8, protecting f5. Yes. Takes on f5. Bishop takes f5. At least the bishop and the knight is still. Protecting e4, rook, protecting the f5 bishop. Nice rook takes b7 by uh, Dubov. 
Wow, there's this fire on board. Now, in the game, rook f6 was played. Now, let's take a look at knight takes b7. What happens if the knight captures the rook on b7? Here we have bishop to b5 check. Yes, you cannot put the king on d8 here because it's going to be a double attack with knight c6, right? Double attack on the king and the queen. And uh, if, let's say, you move back the bishop on d7, this is also not possible because of rook takes e4. So we have a pin on the king on e8. And if, let's say, after king, uh, let's say, after bishop b5, if you play king to f7, then white has knight takes f5. And this is not so good for a black. Okay. And we did found the only defensive move. Uh, this is, it only shows that we did is also an elite player. By the way, yeah, uh, with a good performance here in Tata Steel, we did has a chance to leapfrog Anand as India's number one. Okay. So rook to f6, queen to b1, all right, double up on the b file. It's getting a bit scary for black, but this grandmasters, this strong grandmaster are very calm as well, yes. All right, no worries. I take b7, queen takes on b7, threatening the rook on a8, rook d8, okay, safeguarding the king. Now removing the defender of e4. All right. Takes on f5, rook takes e4. Intermediate check. Nice. An important detail here. King h2, rook e5. This is nice because if you, let's say you take on e5, you also have an extra check, extra move with a check to the king. If let's say you take. So queen c6. King goes to d8. Queen a8, we now have white having this series of checks here. King to d7, bishop b5, king into e6. Now, king, king walk, king walk. And looking for shield, yeah, He's looking for shield. Queen to c8, king f6. Queen goes to h8, I will follow you, king f5. We have to keep an eye also on the rook, right? You have to keep an eye, the king has to protect with this king and the queen. And on the next move, unfortunately, white played the biggest mistake of this game, yeah. White made a big blunder with F3. Okay, but you cannot fault white also in, in a position like this. Probably he also wants to go for the win, yeah, with uh, this position of the king on f5 yeah he probably felt that oh my king is safe on f2 black's king is so dangerous on f5 yes so white was very optimistic yeah, you cannot be over optimistic also in, in 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 your game because that gives you a very big problem yeah. now in this case white was too optimistic he played f3 Actually, here, white can go for perpetual checks with, let's say, go back to c8. Yeah. Queen c8 check. Yeah. If uh, king f6, queen h8. Okay, uh, but after queen h8, probably white might have missed. Okay, let's go back here. Yeah. When the queen was on c8, probably white must have missed uh, that uh, this is not possible. King takes e4 because there is queen g4. Yeah, this is nice. King to d5, queen c4, king d6, and it's a mate. Mate on c6. Yeah, uh, we cannot fault the Dubov uh, <laughs> to play uh, f3. Probably he missed this mating pattern on c8 to g4. All right, look at the Okay, let's let's look at c8 first yeah from c8 to g4 to c4 and c6 triangle so the biggest mistake well everyone makes mistakes and in this game it is uh, it was 
Dubov who made that final mistake that cost him the game. And Vidit pounced on it. Yeah. That's your that's your window of opportunity. Take it. Rook takes e4, takes. The king is pretty safe. Uh, the rook is guarding d4. Queen is guarding the a file. Okay. Queen a a check. King goes to e3. Bishop on c6. Queen e5 check. g3, g4. Now threatening queen to h5. And queen h1 mate. Queen a7 check. King d2. And here Dubov resigned. Okay, for example, we continue with queen f2 check. We have queen e2, right? Just simplifying. Or you can even, if you want, you can also capture that pawn on c3 since there are no checks after that. The queen is guarding e3, is guarding c5, is guarding, the pawn is guarding f3, e1 is also guarded, yeah, no checks, and it's going to be made soon with Queen h5 to queen h1. All right. And with this win, Vidit now is leading Tata Steel after round three. He is the solo leader of the tournament. And he beat it with an uncastled king. All right. Sweet revenge for Vidit this time. Uh, winning over Dubov, who works for Magnus, where, where Magnus won over Anish last time. And I hope you like our presentation for today. This is Coach Oliver signing off. Bye-bye, everyone.